uh, three panelists today, and what they're going to do is give us like a 10-minute um, presentation on you know, how they perceive bravery, advice, and what they've done. And all three stories are going to be super interesting. So let me welcome the first of our panelists, uh, Kelly. Kelly McCormick from uh, Crispin, Porter, and Bogusky. And at CPB, Kelly's interesting. She made a really brave decision. What was it, about nine years ago when she left McCann? I had to say that because, you know, I'm at McCann. Uh, that was really brave. <laughs> Um, and even at McCann, I have to say, where she was part of the team that won the fir in the first lion for the agency, a cyber lion, and this was nine years ago in, sort of, I would say, our reincarnation, so that was a really big deal. She's been at CPB for the last nine years and has done many, many different things, an award-winning, pitch-winning, superstar creative person. Uh, I'm going to list, you know, I could list out the many different industries and clients she's worked on, whether it's American Airlines, whether it's Infinity, whether it's American Express, Best Buy, doing Super Bowl work, doing Brave work, doing, you know, business building sort of ideas. She's done it all. And I've known Kelly personally, so I can say she's one brave gal. So, Kelly, welcome here and thank you. And why don't you give everybody an overview of what bravery means to you? Thank you. Hi, guys. Thank you, Devika, for that very lovely and kind intro. Um, uh, I'm Kelly McCormick, uh, and I have the joy of co-leading uh, Creative Duties for the Domino's account at CPB, um, and the privilege, the true privilege, of representing uh, them here today, uh, because they truly are one of the bravest boldest, most innovative, most daring brands I've ever known or had the pleasure of working for. Uh, but first, uh, before I get to Domino's, quick uh, bit about me, just like Dev Devika mentioned, over nine years ago, I moved from New York to Boulder. Um, and I thought I'd bring back to Manhattan a little bit of the mountains that I fell in love with. So how many of you guys have seen Free Solo? I don't know what's scarier that or a leg waxing, as Devika mentioned. <laughs> um, but this type of thing, since, especially since I moved to Boulder, has, is the first image I personally uh, thought of, the first image that popped into my head when, when asked about bravery. Um, I did fall in love with the mountains out in Boulder um, and have taken up hiking and climbing myself. Um, and a lot of people told me I was brave when I summited this mountain which claimed nine lives this summer, including one about 30 minutes behind me on this knife's edge. I felt really proud of that. I felt strong. I felt like a badass bitch and all, everything that, you know you feel after summoning a 14,000 foot peak and surviving. But I really hesitated to believe um, that I should be called brave for that. And I didn't know why. Um, because, like I mentioned, I look up to people like Alex Hanold and all these extreme athletes and call them brave. And I realized that we share the same thing, which was giving me my reservations, and that's um, that it's a different kind of bravery. It's a selfish kind of bravery. Th those actions, me climbing those mountains, they're all taken to, <laughs> for the sake of my own ego, right? Um, it's all about the post and look at me and look what I was able to do. Um, so if it is bravery, it's a selfish kind of bravery, and, that, and that's OK. But as I was processing uh, bravery and what it meant to me in the context of today, I realized that um, we're here to talk about something different. Um, and that is not selfish bravery, but selfless bravery. It's the kind of thing that you associate with uh, the armed forces or first responders, people who um, jump into action and believe in something, often risk their own lives for the sake of a larger belief bigger than their own ego or a larger group of people beyond their own self. And that is the type of bravery that I personally believe that brands need to engage in and do more of. Um, we get to be, brands get to be selfish often enough. Uh, we have the privilege of interrupting people's, well, what should be their best moments of their day, a nice quiet evening watching TV, uh, a calm, uh, quiet commute home after long days of work. Um, and we, we shout at them. We shout at them our price points, our value propositions, our, our product claims. 
Um, we try to convince them that they cannot live without our product or service. But they can live without us. And the truth is exactly the opposite. Brands cannot survive without the consumer. So we owe our consumers something more than just our products and services. We need to give them something more, protection, a voice, support, or even just a little moment of happiness in their day to day. As uh, Jeffica mentioned, I, I, I get to work on Domino's, and Domino's and CPB have a long history of bold marketing actions. Uh, 10 years ago, we first went on TV and had the guts to admit that Domino's pizza tasted like cardboard. It was really brave. Um, and now, as you right briefly saw in that uh, video, we will be finishing paving roads in all 50 states. Uh, the two ideas 10 years apart might not seem like they have much in common on the surface other than just pizza, but they do. And that's because pizza lovers are at the center of both of these ideas and everything we've done in between. With turnaround, instead of fighting only for home survival, our stock price was, I think, like $2, and we were not doing well. Um, it wasn't just a selfish act. We, we were making our pizza better, and by doing so, we fought for the consumer and their own future, filled with better Netflix and chill nights, better birthday parties, better all-nighters at work, um, because they were able to uh, enjoy better pizza. Um, along the way, we invented the first pizza tracker, uh, which has since been copied by every major brand, um, to make even the wait for pizza a little less painful. Pizza is such a joyful thing, and then you have to wait for it, and it's so annoying. So we wanted to bring a little bit of joy to the consumer, even in that part of their journey. A few years, few years ago, we created um, Domino's Hotspots uh, to make sure people could make moments spent at places that weren't the home or the office, places without a physical address, uh, even better by allowing them to finally get pizza delivered without needing to input an address at checkout. We were crazy enough to design a purpose-built uh, pizza delivery vehicle, because a normal car wouldn't do, um, to ensure that our delivery customers were able to welcome the hottest, freshest, happiness in food form uh, possible to their front door. And with Paving for Pizza, our most recent effort, we continue our mission of better pizza experiences for our carryout consumer. We realized um, that this is a sad reality, that bumps, cracks, and potholes in the road can cause your fresh hot pizza uh, to end up in the footwell, upside down, cheese stuck to the box. Um, so what we did <laughs> was we didn't just fight for our pizza lovers right to better roads or better infrastructure. We actually went out and made the roads better ourselves. Uh, it's been about a year and a half since we first started uh, paving for pizza. And we're finally um, nearing the end of a year and a half of city council negotiations, hours of cold uh, calls to city uh, governments and town halls. Um, and we, hopefully in the next couple months, will finalize paving roads in all 50 states to um, allow our consumers to get their pizza home in better condition uh, no matter where they live. All of this was done because of a simple, singular, fervent belief that is at the root of who we are as the world's number one pizza company. A belief that pizza isn't just food, it's not just sustenance. At its best, it can actually be pure joy in a cardboard box delivered right to your front door. And that has been at the center of a very powerful mission for Domino's, to fight for our consumers' right to those happy moments or happier moments every chance we get. Um, to be 100% honest, taking a, a step back and seeing all the great brands and work that, that Domino's is being honored alongside, um, I, I felt a little odd to be recognized for bravery um, when surrounded by, like, you know, powerful, important, mission-oriented, polarizing work like AIG and Ben and & Jerry's advocating for equality, Gillette changing men, challenging men to be better, Libres normalizing femininity, Skoda championing women's equality, and, and much, much more. We were just paving potholes for the love of pizza. Um, but by looking at this group of work in totality, I realized that there is one thing that unifies us all. And that's that the idea that bravery at its core is simply being relentlessly committed to whatever belief is core and inherent to your brand. 
It doesn't always have to be uh, polarizing or politically charged. For, for Domino's, for a company that believes in the power of pizza to deliver joy, it can be as simple and straightforward as fighting against anything that might stand in the way of that happiness, from the weight to the cold, and yes, even potholes. So to be a brave brand, we, we need to devote ourselves authentically and fully to our consumers. I personally believe consumers are, should be at the center of everything we do. It is, as e it is easy to step away and take the selfish route at any point in the process, to cave and do what your boss wants you to do, or what your client's boss wants you to do, or what the board wants to do. But the bravest thing to do is what your consumer needs you to do. So I challenge us all in the room to, to really listen to them, really listen to your consumer, and selflessly, bravely give them what they're asking of you. When we focus on what matters to them, it's the least risky thing we can all do for our business. And just as a proof point, people really loved uh, paving for, for pizza to the point where uh, it actually sent our stock to an all-time high uh, from $2 back at the tur turnaround uh, phase of our relationship to almost $300 per share. So business results can come from a, a brave and relentless dedication to your consumer. Thank you.